Adults, please turn to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15 in the word of the Lord. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just praise him one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, be glorified in everything, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Let your will be done, God. In everything, Lord God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord God. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Beginning in verse 20. These are the things which defile a man. That means to make him unclean. But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. We covered this last uh, Sunday morning. Now we have an example of somebody who would have been considered unclean. She is known as a, the Syrophoenician Canaanite woman. Verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. That is Gentile territory. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried out unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's tables. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Let's pray. Father, we come before you right now and ask your blessing. <clears throat> to be upon the reading of your holy words. We thank you in advance, God, for what you're going to do. Lord God, you are the king of the universe. Thank you for this example, Lord, where you as the king granted her petition. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go over to Mark chapter 7, and we see the parallel account of this event in the life of Jesus. Praise God. Verse 24, and from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon, entered into a house, and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. Now you see these extra details? So Jesus and his disciples are basically on a retreat. He's hiding, if you will, from the crowds. So he's traveled all the way up into Gentile territory, Tyre and Sidon. Uh, Tyre is about 40 miles from Nazareth. It's on the coast of the Mediterranean. It is um, a Gentile territory. That he has gone into. So basically he is retreating in a sense. Hiding for a moment. Trying to. And he's in this house but he cannot be hid. <clears throat> the Bible says he could not be hid. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit. Heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek. 
Now, we don't get that in chapter 15 of Matthew. So these are other details. That's why I'm reading it to you. She is a Greek. She's not Jewish. She is a Greek, and she is a Syrophoenician by nation. Say with me, Syrophoenician Greek woman who the Bible says in Matthew is also a Canaanite. Okay? She besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it into the dogs. She answered and said unto him, Yea, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, for this saying, go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. Say, praise the Lord, church. This territory that Jesus has gone into, again, is a territory, Syrophoenician territory. It's uh, Tyre and Sidon. This is connected in the Old Testament with the Philistines. Uh, and the Canaanites, of course, these Philistines, the Canaanites, etc. They were a thorn in the side of the Jewish people. They were constantly trying to remove Israel out of their land and defeat them. So uh, they were basically an arch enemy of the people of Israel. This woman is a part of that culture, Greek culture. Syrophoenician Canaanite woman. This territory that she dwells in, Tyre and Sidon, is a very pagan, very pagan, very immoral, very ungodly area of the world. It's close to, as I said, to Nazareth, but as far as its morality, it is extremely immoral. There are two temples that were located there. One was a temple unto Mercury. Another was uh, a temple that was dedicated to the goddess Venus. What took place there was some very immoral sexual rituals. Here's what you probably don't know and have maybe never heard before. Historically, a woman that was a part of the priesthood of that temple, Mercury, was called a Syrophoenician. So that this woman that came to Jesus was not just a woman who was a Greek Canaanite. She was a Syrophoenician. That was the term that was used for a priestess in a pagan te temple. Amen. Historians have studied the culture and they say that not only was a priestess in the pagan temple, which would have made her very sexually immoral, practicing in immoral sexual rituals of that pagan. She was basically a religious harlot. Not only was she, they called Syrophoenicians, these priestesses or these devotees to the pagan deity Mercury. She was also known by in that culture as a dog because that's what they called women like that. They would have called her a dog. That's the way that she would have been looked at by the culture of that day. That's what the Jews would have called her being a temple prostitute or a temple harlot, if you will, connected to the worship of a pagan god. So where she was located, the place she was located in Tyre and Sidon, was extremely immoral. It's one of the most immoral places on the planet at that time. Connected with all kinds of religious prostitution, temple priestesses, etc. Just a very, very uh, unclean place. And that's why we have her as an example in Jewish mind of being an unclean person. So for Jesus, number one, to go into Tyre and Sidon, the area where the Philistines would have been located and the Greeks would have been located is a big deal here because we see the spirit of Jesus going into areas to reach Gentiles, not just to the Jews. 
Now he went there for a purpose of sort of retreating and hiding for a little while. But we find out that there was intentions in that going. And that he could show you that he had a desire to save the most unclean. <clears throat> that he had a desire to go into places where most people who would have been considered virtuous would never have gone. And there in this location, he, he came in contact with a woman and, had a, and where she had a rendezvous with Jesus. It is amazing to me, and it should be amazing to you, how that even before you got in the church, that you had a rendezvous with Jesus at some point in your life. In places that you would not have thought you would have found him. At times where you would have not expected him to show up in your life. When you were at your absolute worst. The Lord came to you in those moments, in those times, in those situations. And began to speak to you and begin to draw you to himself before you ever got in the church. The spirit of Jesus came to you and rendezvoused with you. Maybe... Now, I want you to hear me today. Maybe the first time you ever heard his voice as he began to talk to you with a desire to save you was when you were sitting on a bar stool somewhere and you heard Jesus come and sit beside you and begin to talk to you and tell you that there was a better way to live. Maybe you were in a situation where you were in a car with your friend and you were smoking pot. And all of a sudden, the conversation began to go to a different direction. It was about the Lord. And while you were high, you were talking about Jesus. And while you were high, you were talking about the tribulation period. While you were high, somehow that conversation began to go toward Him and the things of Him. And then you begin to realize after you got in the church that you had a rendezvous with Jesus while you were smoking pot, sitting in a car with your friend. And you were talking about the Lord at that time. And you knew that God was at that moment beginning to give you a pre-illumination to salvation. He was getting ready to... To save you in that situation. I'm trying to tell you today, brothers and sisters, the first time you heard his voice probably was not in an apostolic Jesus name church. The first time you heard his voice was when the Spirit of Jesus went to you in maybe in an immoral situation, in a pagan situation, in an ungodly environment, and you had a rendezvous with Jesus because that's the way he is. He has a desire to save to the uttermost them that would call upon him. Your salvation began long before you ever got in the church of Jesus Christ. Your salvation took place, amen. Maybe God spoke to you when you were having family problems. Maybe you were on the verge of a divorce. But God stepped in and began to call you and began to draw you to himself. I want you to understand that my salvation started taking place long before I ever got baptized in his name. Because I was one of those that were sitting in that car talking to my friend about God in the tribulation period when I was stoned out of my mind. But God came and talked to me in that environment because he had a plan to save my wretched soul. Give God praise in the house. I had a rendezvous with Jesus in a very unlikely place. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. God comes to people in all kinds of situations. Right now, there may be somebody shut up. He uh, Shut up in, in an apartment somewhere or shut up in a hotel room somewhere that is contemplating suicide. Your lifestyle is dark and it's demonic oppression is upon you and you see no hope for your life. But I'm here to preach to you today that there is a Jesus that will give you mercy. In fact, I'm going to call this message this morning, Mercy, I need help. Mercy, I need help. 
Somebody today as I stand here preaching is locked up in a hotel room contemplating suicide. Somebody I'm preaching today right now is addicted to drugs. Somebody today is going from one sexual partner to another sexual partner and you're getting paid for it. But I'm here to tell you that God wants to save you because he's that kind of God. Somebody today I'm preaching to, not here, but maybe out there. You are in the gangs and running in the gangs and you think that's the way to live. But I preach you a, a Jesus that's coming to you in the gang environment, finding you on the streets and saying, I want to save you. I'm preaching to somebody that's probably going to hear this message in prison because God is going to speak to them and rendezvous with them by this message while they're sitting in in a prison cell. And as you know in prison. There is no modesty. I've never been there. But I want to tell you. If you want to try to live holy. Prison is not the place. You can live holy. The dress is not going to be biblically holy. Hallelujah. The atmosphere is not going to be biblically holy. People that are going to be pursuing you, it's not going to be a wholesome environment. But I'm preaching to somebody today that Jesus is going to go into that prison cell. And you're going to hear this message. And you're crying out, mercy, help me. And God is going to help you if you receive him into your life. Give the Lord praise in this house. Because he's that kind of a God. He cares for your soul. And he cares for the souls of people all over this world today. Amen. In, in these different locations that you would never think that Jesus would go to. You think that Jesus would go to a prison? I tell you that he would. You say, I don't think Jesus would ever go into that environment. Yes, he will. Because he has a, des a desire to save people. Praise God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And God wants to use you and he wants to use me. The last thing he wants you to do is to get in the church and get self-righteous. Once you get saved, he wants you to be put out there in that world in all kinds of environments. Hallelujah. As long as they don't overwhelm you and, and take you back out into the world. Give God praise. But God wants to put you in environments where you can reach the drug addict. You can reach the prostitute. You can reach the hopeless. Hallelujah. You can reach even the wealthy that don't have any hope. Praise God. You can reach the educated man today that's crying out for help because he doesn't. He's just so broken. His marriage is about to be destroyed. But God. God comes to him to save that man. Mercy, I need help. Mercy, I need help. Give God praise in this house. A lot of times we get in the church, we forgot where the Lord found us. Don't forget where God found you. You have to keep on being reminded where God found you so you'll keep a, a thankful spirit and not get religious self-righteously, but you thank God every day that he found you in the, hallelujah, give God praise in the house. I don't know all of your story, but I know that God began to talk to some of you. A brother of this church right now, and I'm almost tempted to give his name, but I want, he told me just the other day, he said, Pastor, he said, I came real close. I had checked myself into a hotel room. I had a handgun in my hand, and I fully intended to, to commit suicide in that hotel room. I said, brother, I thank God that you didn't do it. Now he's saved. He's in the church. He's filled with the Holy Ghost. He's living for the Lord. And God has given him grace and mercy every day of his life to continue his walk with God. Give God praise in the house. I thank God that he didn't do it. I don't know where you've been. I don't know if you've ever been in that place before. But God stepped in. God intervened. I'm just telling you. God intervened to help that man so he wouldn't do that. Because God had a plan to save him. Now obviously I'm preaching to church people today. But every day you get up, the Bible says, listen to me. Every day you get up, you need mercy. Every day I get up, I need, I need mercy for that day. Help me, Lord, I need mercy. Mercy, help me. And the good news, the Bible says in the book of Lamentations, that every day you get up, His mercies are renewed every morning. When you got up, His mercy was waiting for you. 
to give you enough mercy to make it through the day. Hallelujah. To the, and then tomorrow when you get up again, there's going to be enough mercy to get you through whatever you face it in that day. So every day you live, mercy comes to help you every morning you got up. This morning I got up, mercy was waiting for me. Mercy was waiting for me to help me give the Lord praise in the house. When you got up, mercy was waiting there to help you give the Lord praise. For his mercy endures forever. What a mighty God we serve. I thank God for the mercy of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Give him a hand clap of praise. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. You are Lord Jesus. Today you need mercy. Today you need mercy. Loving kindness. He said, loving kindness. You need the mercy of God today. I need the mercy of God today. Every one of us, we need mercy to keep living for God. We need mercy to keep on going. We need mercy to face the challenges that we face on a daily basis. We need mercy. I, don't, I know you're saved, and I know you got the Holy Ghost, but we still need mercy every day. Hallelujah. Give God praise in the house.